Santa. Hello everyone and welcome back to Drooling Polar Bear. So, last time I got stuck on what to do here. I had some pizza. I had a bit of fudge. Fudge helps me think. And I thought, what is the best way to say this? I wrote, I physically wrote down all the stuff and was like, what do I want to say? And I realized it's a lot easier than I thought. No. So basically, what I want is, as we'll out. see, and you know that how. when it appears, come on. Okay, dead body. And that is why the announcement Wait, was this the right one? I don't have my paper with me. Really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. I think that was the right one. Shoot, I need to think about this again. Okay, wait, no. Okay, let's- I think that's the right one. Dead body had been found. The dead body that had been found was someone else's. Yes. Shoot! Wait, no, I think I did that wrong. I think I want someone else's dead body. I should have had the paper with me. Oh my god. I was so smart. I'm like, I'm gonna write this down. Okay. Someone else's discovery, and then I want has been... Yes, yeah, someone else's discovery was... No, that's not it. Okay. There we go. Oh my god. So much for logic level gentle, am I right, fellows? <laughs> oh. Like, I figured it out. I figured it out, but I couldn't say it. And it was the worst. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. And there were at different times. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. Why don't we ask him? What do you say, Monokuma? I'm happy he's here. Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Exactly. Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. The second body discovery announcement was, okay, so the first time it played was when we found each body in the nurse's office in the equipment room. The second time was... Just after wait, is asking for the actual time or why? It was after Hifumi came back to life. Are you really sure about that? Try to think and remember what. The second announcement came after Hifumi woke up for the last time. I think what? No shit. What? Second body discovery announcement. The first one played when we discovered them each in the offices. Yes, the second time was. When both bodies were rediscovered. Was it? I, got it. I guess, sure, maybe. We heard it a second time I thought it was after. When we rediscovered the two bodies. I thought it was after he came back to life. Oh, no, right, because. Wait. But he wasn't dead, or what? Oh god, I'm so confused actually now. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. When did he open his eyes again? 
that was at the... Wait, he, no, oh right, no, no, I'm, I'm confusing the order of events in my head, never mind. Maybe I should have paid attention to that recap. For the first time. So, when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! But a big bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Yes, there is. Okay, then. Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. It's the uh, glasses cleaner, right? Because because only he could have used it to wipe his glasses clean, and that's why they were clean later on. Fumi's glasses. Yep. He's so glasses. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. True. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. That's and the true. Next time we saw his body, Technically. It was in the repository. Yes, and that was when he, he actually died. His body before being moved, and his oh, body here we go. Moved, There's no difference. Other than the change in how he was positioned. There was no notable difference. Yes, there was. <laughs> gotcha. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office and the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository... I really do wonder if someone just said, Are you sure you remember that? And it's like, we have no evidence. We're just going on accounts. So we'd have to ask people. And would they remember? I wouldn't remember they such a thing, spotless. but... Huh. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. It was the... Uh, where is it? Glasses cleaning cloth with blood. The only one who would have that design is him. Glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggle. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. Ah, oh, but here's where the twist comes. There's a secret weeaboo. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. Much like Miles Edgeworth, Byakia... It's the secret weeb. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, he does not mean he wipes the blood off himself. Wow, you really seem to be defending him, Celeste. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner. That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, what was with all that blood? Was it pink or something? See, this is why the truth bullet of the, the uh, blood packets would make sense, but... The fridge in the oh, well, there we go. I guess we're for playing for two, you know? He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! Including on his face, which is pretty gross. But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. God, what an idiot! 
and if Kafumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. What to move Taka's body was Hifumi. Taka himself is dead. He's dead. He's dead, dead, dead. It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Oh, what? yeah, definitely. That's the thing. One of. That means he took part in the murders. I, I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? The paper, right? Is that what it is, the paper? the note he had. Ifumi had hidden this note on him, so he stole it. The e-handbook. This Is this gonna come up? Mm, why is that in there? Okay, yeah, it's gotta be the, um, the note because that's the thing he had on him. Because there's nothing else, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good, that's it. I was worried. You're talking about the note Ifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Uh, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Mm. Yes, his pants. I never want to hear that from Sakura again either. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. Found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's be in the equipment room at 6 a.m. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. This is where the drugging and the robo body will come into then play, right? This isn't the same one hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hira, and that person could only have been... <laughs> I love how there is literally only one option at this point. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him! Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but... Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! Um... Just to be clear... TikTok is Taka, and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Ugh! Yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm so quiet during this, because I'm thinking about every possibility as it goes on. Man, Genocide Jack, seriously, are we just gonna go back and forth between Jack and Jill? That's fine. But still, can't let her get to me. Just gonna freak down a pumpkin hill, I gotta find- I've used that joke. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Alright, so... It's gonna be the broken wristwatch, Shifumi's glasses, glasses, and cleaning cloth. Well, I don't know what this is gonna be for. Had the note, right? Yes. Then the person it was intended for must have been happy. But remember what the note said. Stop at the spinning. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. I believe. Yes. The time doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Uh, except six o'clock. Boom! I was actually very happy I was able to figure that out so quickly because I'm like, I have three things to choose from, oh god. No, there absolutely is a connection. What, what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m. 
which is the same time Taka was murdered. Yes. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. Well, let's just have everyone write out and see... Oh, no, because uh, the person who I think it is, Celeste, can probably change her handwriting. I think that She's going to say everyone write it out and just see who it is, but no, not, not necessarily. Well, when you put it like that... Plus, we don't have an, an analyst here. Then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. The culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stop down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead. Show us. I do have proof, actually, and it is the Kiyotaka scrap of paper that matches. Got, Got it. Boom. When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... Are you going to line it up? It. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I feel like that should have been established it. before and not during, but that's fine. They're from the same piece of paper. To be fair, you can pretty easily see they're from the same piece of paper by just looking at them, which is fine, you have to think for yourself. Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Ifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Ifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive. Nope. Okay, dude, you're trying. I get it, but... Sorry. No. When we found him in the repository... Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? The Whoever true mastermind, the mastermind, yeah. The true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah. Because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. Because that's why the one that we have is wet. Oh. Would that be seriously risky for him? Okay. I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. We're gonna have to present that. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. I don't think Celeste was meant to be killed um, I anyway because she's the mastermind. They used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. 
They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? Well, I'm glad you asked, Sakura. Because... Are we gonna- Okay, I was gonna- uh, Wait, 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 wait. Are you serious? We're doing one of these? I thought it would just be present. Make your argument. We have... Spotless Hammer. Good thing we have that. Okay. What was used to kill Hifumi? Well, I mean, isn't that it? Damn it. Sorry. Okay, I mean, that is the answer, but obviously we're not going to go with that. Okay. What was used to kill I don't think it's ever going to be one right away. Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? I don't think I press it there. Oh my god, what? <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Nope, not necessarily. That's the one. Okay, so yeah, I should always let it play first, because then it's pretty obvious when, like, it's not going to be one of the first ones, you know? It's like, check all the evidence before shooting. Justice Hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But... Seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used the hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for them to work together, but at least it's without a first. But, okay, now I don't know where this is going. Let's see. Make your argument. Spotless hammer? I think we're gonna have to absorb one. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. I'm gonna take that one. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Hmm. Two murders, then impossible? Can we really say there's no chance two people worked on this? Based on the rules that have been I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do impossible. Wait, I'm gonna just shoot this randomly. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. I'm gonna go two murders suck up then into impossible. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. I'm gonna say two murders, then impossible. Because the second murder wasn't planned, right? Even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, right? Only the one who actually carried out the hmm. can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule. Yay, that was right for once. I was so worried. The ones that you have to suck them up are the ones I have trouble with, because thinking about which way to put Since them in, you know? Murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward? 
benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? Well, I mean, let's take a look at who we have left alive, you know? So, I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning, which is why um, she said to not look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing, although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. <gasps> like, it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. Maybe it's because she's the ultimate detective? I don't know, man. I feel like that's pretty obvious. She even looks like one. The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Is it a choose? Yeah, let's do this. I like how you can select people who are dead, that's... I think it's you, Celeste. Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Oh, it's a voice line, meaning it's correct. Uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? Heck yeah, you are. <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. You used your feminine wiles, you witch. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain fat lazy worthless goddamn idiot! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! <laughs> uh, just to be clear, there is evidence to I actually it. really like that persona of her. It's really great. But there is? Is that so? Is there? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. The off-screen screaming? Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. Uh, what is it they had in common? The screaming, yeah. Well, it's true that both of them did a lot of screaming. I don't think that's it. Damn, what? Okay. Okay, right. Yeah, they were the only ones to encounter the suspicious... Yeah, okay. Because discounting both of them, no one else saw the character. Robo Justice. Oh. Oh my god. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. Okay, that is the exact same thing I said. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? Yeah, that is very suspicious we because to the yeah. second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor. She, she literally directed us where to go, and that's and why I thought it was her. What was wrong? What was it she said?
Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. And that's, and, oh right, the bathroom, yeah, that's gonna be the thing after. What was that that came from downstairs? It was Hifumi, and then afterwards, it yeah. Was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. See, I didn't remember that fact, but that would make sense if that were true. Was it? Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's, then yeah, that's a big fatal flaw. Well, fatal weak point. Celeste and were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on... That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It sounded like a bird, you know, it's like, just make a bird noise, ka you know? your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? That's, that wasn't that loud of a scream. I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. A certain, uh... Oh, she was the one that said it! You were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... The whole thing was one big act! Hina... You were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Because she said, let's go to the bathroom. Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait, then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. I'm trying to think of what that mistake is before we get to it. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it. But looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. Was it her account? We have her account. What was her account? Uh, apparently they weren't gone for a minute or two... I don't know what this is gonna be. Let's see where he goes with this. What are you talking about? There's that stutter. I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. That was when she said I haven't been gone a minute or two. They must be really enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. We're all going to die. Okay! Wait a second. Remember how I said that's weird for Miss? I'm never going. To, I, I'm fine with living here. That was weird, and I pointed that out. I remember her saying that too, but I, I don't can't understand what's so strange about it. Right. And pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said Okay, anything. no, that, that, that makes even more sense than what my dumb characterization thing was. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Yeah, I can say that Celeste's comments don't make sense. What is he alluding to? Oh boy. This one's gonna be fun. Make your argument. It's Monokuma File 3. I think I'm gonna need to oh. wait. Monokuma File 3 says, um, cause of death, yeah, no, it's gonna be an absorb one. Was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us. No, that's not it. Whoops. Confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. No, that's the wrong one. We are going to die. Shoot. Just like those there we go, that's the one. Yeah. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's 
obvious, isn't it? What was so strange? What? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's try this again. Okay, so. Yes. Really be enjoying this. Enjoying the Us? Is it the us? Let's see here. Let's just let it play. All us? All. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is hmm. And that's all it takes. But what was so strange about Celeste's comment? Let's see here. What she said, she would have only known about Hifumi's death. Then mind, what's so strange? Okay, so I'm, I'm, maybe I have to do the end, then the last. Okay, so. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna absorb so strange. And that's all it takes to finish. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Okay, so I'm gonna take so strange and connect it with uh, those guys instead. Maybe I'm not thinking about these absorb ones in the right way. Is this the right one? Okay, there we go. So it does depend on the order. Mm, that's not fun. Monokuma's enjoying this though. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys die. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. Is she gonna say, those guys is not gender neutral? <laughs> You all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? That's easy, I've explained that, I think. How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? Because it's the other way around! It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? Yep. So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to... To set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Are we going to do the... Simple. Let's see here. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? Or Kyoko's just gonna answer it. What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered us. No, there is no other explanation. Other explanations? The place wasn't of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. It's Hifumi holding the suspect up. Um, Hifumi's dragging the suspect away. Okay, yeah, that'd be the one. Hifumi's. There's only one answer that is correct here because the rest of them are jokes. Not a picture of the suspect dragging I wonder if those change when you're on a harder difficulty. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Celeste thinks she can prove that there's no way Hifumi's dragging the suspect away. Is that really possible? Beat battle or no? Okay. Make your argument. Robo Justice Yasuhiro, Robo Justice Blueprints. Okay. Let's see what this is gonna be. What was okay? So 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 Robo Justice Blueprints. 
Yasir's message. Meet in the dining hall. Clear and neat handwriting. Robo Justice. Use a blueprints to Robo Justice. Bend like this. Robot costume. No one but Yasuhiro could fit in the costume. In addition, to anyone wearing it would not be able to see their feet or bend at the waist for more than 90 degrees. Okay. Dress me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just drink me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person... The person was unconscious. Wait a second. There we go. Inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way... Except there is! You fool. Because you can't move at the waist. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. That is a fatal flaw of that costume. Can you imagine? I mean, obviously, it's, it's Hifumi obviously made it. If you were to bring that to like a convention or something, like how would you sit down for your your convention burger that is overly expensive? What a what a terrible picture! I can't wait to use it for a thumbnail. when they made it so it couldn't bend at the weight but what if it wasn't a mistake is that what's gonna be said so there sure we go that was a mistake god am i kyoko is that is that the thing you're supposed to take away i think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was <laughs> celeste and hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuck hero into it that's how they were able to fake that whole thing the point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> Ooh, she's not having it. Well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> oh, is she gonna have an Ace Attorney transformation? <laughs> oh, that's slightly dizzying. You mean the lie you told him? Hey, if, yeah. Yeah, the the lie? When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? Wow, your voice is getting high pitched. He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. What if that's your real name? Confusing statements don't make any what? sense. What? That's his actual name? Only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! <laughs> oh my god, she's getting violent. What do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? He w Oh, he used people's last names! Yeah. Wow, that's that's a thing that's that right. makes more sense in the last Japanese name. version for sure. He called us all by our last name. Mr. Blank, Mrs. Blank. Right. Right, right, right. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Fumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name. Oh my god, I <gasps> Oh my god. I know the exact reason why why the notebook is part of it. The e handbook because we're going to ask to take a look at Celeste's to see her last name. <gasps> oh my god. Dude, so he threw me, was trying that's to pretty hype. The last name of whoever killed him, but the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Except, well, no, hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Oh, here we go. 
What did you just say? To think you take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. <laughs> oh my god, her voice actor just is great. But no, cause cause if she denies it, then it's like why are why are you why do you want to hide your name from us? Oh my god. <laughs> With your idiotic blather, Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? Wow, you're angry. What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Fine. Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up. My real name. It's not. That's not your name. Celeste won't give up. So then, I have to do something to make her accept it. Cause it has to be her real name in the note in the e. I keep calling it a notebook. The e handbook. Oh my god. Here we go. I'm actually so hyped. Shoot. Wrong one. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. Okay, so. If there's one person here who might have that last name. It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. Let's do this. How many times do I have to tell you? It's gonna be my name is blank and you have no way to prove it in the... In... Oh my god, nice. It's upside down. How long do you plan to go on? Oh my god, are they gonna get upside down later? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. That's gonna be tough on a TV. You have no way to Except pay. I do. No. Yes, there it is. Oh, that's hype. That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on. It shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. Oh my god, that's actually so brilliant. But why did Kyoko say, hey, it's gonna be part of the thing? It should just always be in your thing, so like the like the attorney badge in Phoenix Wright. Clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Oh, is she gonna break down or go double down? Is it gonna be a? Is it gonna be? Is she gonna double down or go for broke? Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up because, 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 because. <laughs> Sound like a chicken there at the end. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. <laughs> just pulls out a gun. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be funny. Let's see. Oh, here we go. And shed light on all your crimes. Here's where I lose all my and points. Everything to an end. Okay, let's do this. Let's put it all together. Climax Inferno. So, wow, look at that room. Oh my god, look at the picture of him. Okay, so what we want is... Them having a talk. Right? Right? Wait, someone said that if I were to press a button on these, it does give me a... In this case, how did the killer recruit the accomplice? What was the seduction? That's not going to be part of it at all. Chips? He's not into chips. Uh, how? What is this supposed to be a picture of? I don't know. We'll, we'll do that one after. Okay, so act two. So, hmm. Uh, that is at 1 a.m. This is when this happened. We, 1 a.m., he c walks in the door. And this is when he's drugged. So, he walks in, he's like, hey guys, what's up? Right? Wait, wait, let's, let's double check. Uh, who was the killer summoned first? Okay. It's him. And just to be sure, let's put this one back. Um, what time? Okay, god, this is so much nicer now that I know I can press this. Uh, they knocked him out, stuffed him in the robo costume to justify their evidence, and they used a certain item to do it. Certain item. The backpack? What was this certain item?
Oh, so it was the camera, and the camera took it. Right, okay. Then this is at s this time, right? He uses it, he hits the hammer. Smack, kapowie. The justice hammer used to kill Taka. What number was on it? That was hammer number two. Because one was used to beat up Celeste. Wait, or was it three? Justice hammer number... So one was to hit Celeste. Two was the fake hit on Hifumi. Three, four. It was four. Because it was we wanted to find his dead body second. So it was four. She gives the camera. What's it say? In the library, Hifumi used something to fake the... Uh, uh, fake it. Fake it. What did he? Oh, that was Justice Hammer 3 on him. Where he was like, oh, I'm bleeding thanks to Justice Hammer 3. We did it off. He covered himself in it. That is a wonderful picture of him all spinning around. Um, which Justice Hammer was in... Wait. No, that was 2 he used on the first hit. And then 3 was used here. Right? Or was it 4? Three. I'm pretty sure. We all see the dead body. We're shocked. That's that's the thumbnail potential. Um, he does it. He pulls it out, and then he gets pushes it over. All that happens, and then this is the weapon used. Uh, what happened with it? It was the blank one, right? Or is is it supposed to be washing? Okay, so not part, not part, not part. Those are definitely not parts of it. This one is, I think, the first one. Okay, so which ones did we miss? It was the first one. Yeah, because he was hit with two, and that's where he faked his injury. And then later he was hit with... Because the whole thing was we... No, okay, so this is backwards. It's This is four. That's the one he pretended was the one he was hit with. And then we was actually... So the one that actually killed Taka here was three. I was right the first time. Three. And four. Okay, and then the first one will be... I feel like I got this on my first attempt now that I have the power to check my buttons. Okay, so... I feel like this is it. Let's get going. Okay. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder, and that person was- Shoutouts to Godzilla and Gamera, he's equal opportunity. He flew me. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, he fully positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. Crap, I used the wrong one here. It clearly That's said four on it. Killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. Damn it, it clearly said four on it. Well, thankfully that one actually just let me see. Oh, man. Just like in school, in the end, it comes down to numbers. Did it just say it on it before and I missed it? Oh my god, I am so dumb. It clearly said Hammer 4 on it. Wow. Okay, so yeah, 2 was the one he hit with in there. This one was 3. God. 
Guys, I can't numbers. Okay, let's try this again. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get it right in the first time, and it wasn't true. There we go. The other number ones are gonna be wrong, too. I'm calling it now. The reason hammer number four was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. All right, two attempts, not bad, not bad. Using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... God, what a good image. I love these, these American art style ones. Like, not really American, but you know what I mean. These, these style, I actually almost prefer these to the game's actual, like, art style. What a good picture that I can't use for a thumbnail. You lose. Oh god, how's her traumatic death gonna be? I lost? I lost? When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? She gonna be killed with, like, poker cards? <laughs> Listen to you trying to take charge. As if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Oh, no, but I like your accent. It was actually fun to get used to. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. What? That was an act the whole time? The voice and everything? Okay, straight up, like, I wouldn't even mind that have been her, her voice the whole time. I did okay, it's gonna be B. No, okay, it's an A rank, sure. 93, I didn't think I did that well. Okay, Monokuma, I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm, hmm. 
Hmm. Oh boy, time for backstory that it's makes you cry. The moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote, okay? If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Okay, here we go. And one, two, three. There we go. Mm, okay. This is going to be brutal. I don't know if I can watch this. Actually, I kind of can, and I'm kind of excited to see what happens. But let's see here. It's basically formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct. The black in this time, the true killer who's devised the whole stinking scheme was... Celestial Ludenborg, Ludenberg, or more precisely, Taiko Yasuhiro. Honestly. I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. Hifumi's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. I knew it. So you really did approach Hifumi with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hm. I'm sure he relied she relied on her specialty in lying. <laughs> My specialty, don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use, you know. <sighs> I knew you figured it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used her. <gasps> oh! Oh! Thou, okay. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does she mean... Oh, and it's kind of nice she's actually not blowing up the whole operation for everyone. Is she talking about alter ego? Say what? What? What, what, what? What are you talking about? Just a second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. <laughs> I'm totally out of the loop, as usual. How sad. In other words... Then you're the one who that stole it? Indeed. That's right. I see. And you used it to drag Kafumi into the plan you'd come up with. <laughs> right again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it disappeared, I paid Hifumi a little visit. Um, oh, um, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? What? Are you okay with it? It was Taka. He stole it. Yeah. Well, now what? So then. And I have proof. Would you like to see it? it? Turned out... Oh, that's the digital cameras for... I'd taken... You know what's to talk his room earlier and took pictures of it there. Wow, she is a mastermind! That is brilliant! I deleted the picture as soon as I showed it to Hifumi, of course. Also, look at this room. Jesus. Wow. That's bad. Damnation! Oh my god. Oh my god. Why? So, so it was him. But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if anyone, uh, if either of us got close to her. <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? Oh, jeez. The hole gets deeper and deeper. Please forgive me. He he threatened me. Oh. Yo. Oh. Blackmail. He came to my room last night unannounced, and then it is hard for me to even say. He abused me. What? Oh, jeez. That would have got it if this game was rated heavier. Would have changed. Actually, no, maybe not. <sighs> Whoa, okay, maybe it is. Okay, I thought it was just okay. And, and he took pictures. He said if I did not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I had no choice. Animation. That's a crime. It's an absolute crime. He, I mean, he got a little crazy, but... Oh, wow, yeah. So this was just all in the palm of her hand. It was amazing how completely he bought it. Hmm, I can't express how enjoyable that was. I'm about to say something I've never said before in my life. I'm gonna kill him. I'm... <laughs> oh, man, I like that. The stutter. Wait, please, if you go now, you'll be playing right into his hands. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Taka's plan to use her to escape, and he made you his target. What? Oh, jeez. <sighs> Taka's gonna try to kill you. Indeed. Also, he can keep her to herself. <sighs> Himself. This is un completely unforgivable. Hmm. Honestly. Uh, can we allow him to continue with these up barbaric <laughs> acts? Absolutely not. How could I? She, I she. Oh man, you are kind of dumb in the end. Then would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. 
I'm just, I, like, I get this is necessary backstory, but I just want to see how this ends now, because, like, oh my god, that's the more interesting part. Uh, escape the school. <laughs> that it is complete. <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, well, you said that out loud. That's kind of dumb. If it would be agreed without a second thought. Hmm. That item that had the effect on him was remarkable. The power of love. Even a love as twisted as that can drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um... uh, you disgust me. Ho oh. ho. I see. I have another question for you. What was was that strange costume of Fumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that, but it's my fault for picking him in the first place. But... Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. So why did you decide to make me the suspect? <sighs> because you're stupid. Huh? Well, that's it? Let's see. And in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stup stupidity surpassed my every expectation. <laughs> Life must have been tough on your parents, though. Oh my god. Top 5 Most Brutal Anime Beatdowns. Uh, I feel like I could cry. But when you were explaining your plan to Fumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? Oh, uh, what she's asking is, what was Fumi supposed to do after that, assuming you actually let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part and pretended to be dead, once someone showed up, I told him he'd been seriously wounded, he was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. And he really believed that. Well, of course, that wasn't all there was to it. As I explained to Fumi, the plan was, well, you're all questioning about what happened to him, I was going to murder someone. At that point, if Fumi would have an alibi, so no one would cast doubt on him. I told him that, and he believed it. Hmm. It all seems very straightforward, stereotypical. I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Fumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you planned to kill him all along. <laughs> but of course... There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? Wow. How can human life mean so little to you? Well... That's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Byakuya! I and Byakuya's gonna that. be like, Huh. <laughs> uh, no, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Mm. Are you talking about the $10 million Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money, it's true. But that's not all there is to it. From the moment our life, new life here began, my only thought has been escape. But, but all this time you've been saying how you, uh, you, we have to accept living here. You little bitch. Well, well, there you go. Obviously, that was a lie. Hey. I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anything, more than anyone, anyone else in here. Wow. You little bitch. Wanted to get out. Every day was fresh torture. Do you want to know why, huh? Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would... Oh, everyone... I That's the thing. Everyone here has dreams and aspirations. And that is something that isn't really super brought up too much. I guess that's what the tapes were at the beginning, though. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing uh, less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. And there's no way I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical kill. As for me... And it was all for that dream. And what was that dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. Well, that makes sense. A castle? Whoa, dang, that's a good picture. <laughs> and together, handsome men from all over the world serve as many butlers slash bodyguards. It's gonna make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Wow, you are into some stuff, lady. Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfect a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. You know what? I can appreciate a woman who lives by her own brand of justice. Goodbye with my own winning winnings. Monokuma's $10 million would have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge, there but... To be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream to the very end, so why wouldn't I? Just or why would I? You sound so passionate, but were you able to kill your own friends for it? Oh. Are you asking me if I feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Wow! She's kind of cruel. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> hmm. Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? That's what we should be saying in plus. Or that's what we should be saying, rather. How could you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? Oh man, Asahina's gonna cry, no. My ability to rely is unrivaled and I take pride in that. It's not just other people, I can even fool my- I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious, wow. 
And that's why you're not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. Wow. But you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I had a choice then, I think I would like to come back as Marie Antoinette. Well, there's a slight problem with that. Hey, you just get executed again. Okay. Celeste smiled then. When she did, she looked... It looked to me like a poor effort to force it. She claimed she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself must have been her final lie. And that weak fake smile is what betrayed her. You all done! Kills. Okay, then let's get rolling. The black can disturb the peace and must pay the price. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment! For her, the ultimate gambler. Let's Here we go. Oh my god. It's punishment time! Okay. Okay, let's see what it is. I'm not ready. I'm not ready at all. What? Will it really Room give you the 17? You're I can't say I ever saw it that way. What was the seven? Oh, the locker key, I guess. Which is why, actually, it's not important. The locker key for for uh for the the, the laptop. Well then, take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. You know when she's actually speaking. She feels a lot more sympathetic as a character. Let's see how brutal this gets. Oh boy. Are you serious? I don't know if I liked it that it ended with an ambulance running into her. I feel like, I feel like the original Burning Alive death was a lot more symbolic and actually, I guess the whole thing was it was to give her like the feeling of, oh hey, I'm dying in the way I wanted, and then being like, nope, haha, joke's on you, you're gonna die like a, in an anticlimactic way, giving her a final second of true despair. It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but... I also can't deny that, at one point, I considered her a friend, too. And for him to just come along and... Isn't it just awful? Someone, could have cut free Someone couldn't cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. You guys are still young. You need pl you need to place more value on your lives. What are you gonna do? Jeez, and I hear I thought you guys were gonna pass on the torch of hope to the next generation. Let me out of here. Uh, what do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you just let me out of here. Too bad. You're all the embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not. And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one. It's sad, yes, but that reality just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you gonna keep us going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. So anyway, Kyoko, did you get some type of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey. So uh, what's what's the what what, what what's the deal with that, bro? Wah -wah. Huh? What's the matter? So then, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You. What did you do? Hmm. What? What did you do? What? 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 Ooh. Hey. 
Answer me, what did you do to- What? Ooh, how exciting. What? 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 Um, yeah. What was that about just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Okay, well, things are getting kind of awkward. I, it's, it's about time I get out of here. Well? Oh my, what? What does that mean? Meanwhile, you guys can go on enjoying your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya later. What did that mean? Like, okay, it's like every time. Every time it's like resolve this normal plot and i'm like yeah i enjoyed that and then it's like here's a hint of the real plot and it's like excuse me what monokuma disappeared leaving us all depressed and in despair although it wasn't all despair there was one small hope hey kyoko monokuma already mentioned it but what's that key uh, come on man so most likely it's the key to one of the dressing room lockers huh? wait then that means hmm. celeste probably hid it in there hey. I suppose it's easiest to miss what's right under your nose. Well, then, we'd better go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. It's gonna be like an hour and a half part, I swear. As we approached the dressing room, Kyoko looked back at us and hey. said, I'm gonna go on alone from here. Everyone else head back to the dining hall. I'll check with you later. What? Why exactly are you going alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance camera. That's not what I meant. Why you? There's still a risk. There's still the risk of a spy, you know. Then I'll go too. What? You? Please let me go. Standing here and arguing is just gonna draw more attention to us. Do whatever you want. Yo, Biakia did the back down. The Biaka back down. Thank you, Biakia. Then it's up to you now. Yo. I'm gonna go to Daddy Hall, okay? Ah, uh, so Mikoko. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, does that mean what I think it means? Okay. Sorry, Asahina. Good luck, Makoto. Girls like her are total pushovers when you show a little backbone. I tried to forget what Hina said. Everyone head back to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko there alone. Shall we go? Well then, shall we? Yep. So then. Uh, we need to get into that locker. Kyoko took the key Celeste had given her and unlocked the locker. As the lock swung open, we saw... Good morning. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's safe, thank goodness. I never heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It was like she was speaking from the bottom of her heart. I just- I did just what Celeste asked. I didn't say a word. I stayed quiet the entire time. No. Oh, and... I think I might be able to open the last set- Oh, okay. Plot. I'm doing my best, so please wait just a little while longer. So now we can say the case is officially closed. As far as the incident is concerned, sure, but... Can we take a second? Since we have this opportunity, I want to be on- I want you to be honest with me. Yoko, please. What are you trying to do all on your own here at the school? Wrong button. Is that what you wanted to come here? Is that why you wanted to come here with me? However, Regardless, that's not something you need to know right now. I don't need to know? That just makes me even more worried. What? Worried? Like what happened during the investigation this time? You disappeared and we didn't see you again. Without warning, with ex without explanation. When you do that... Indeed. It's only natural you think I'm the mastermind spy, right? And you too. No! I believe in you. What? You believe in me? Isn't it obvious? People believe in their friends, right? That's why I want you to tell me. I want you to believe in me too. Because we're friends. We're Nakama. I understand. It's true. Then maybe I can believe in you. Just a little bit more. Then... Fine. fine, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I've been disappearing and where I've been going. You see... Okay, that's fine. We're just not gonna- it's gonna be like, what I heard was the most amazing thing. Chapter clear. What I heard from Kyoko then was, well, frankly, it kind of blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, she told me a story that was, well, almost unbelievable. I decided I'd confirm what she told me with my own two eyes, so I waited for the nightmare to come. And when it did, it, I went into action. What? Correct. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera or monitor in it. And it's in the st and in the storage closet there, way in the back. She said it was way in the back of the boys' classroom storage closet, but could Kyoko really be right? What is this? Okay. I'm gonna get chapter clear right away, so I'm just- I'll do it. 
gonna be chapter clear in a second, so. There's just normal storage closet as far as I could tell. The secret Kyoko told me about, could it really be hidden here? Is that a hidden, that's a hidden door. She said in the way back of the storage closet, but I mean seriously? Without thinking, I placed my hand on the back of the storage closet and suddenly, as if I were being yanked in, Gus shunk. At the same time I heard that sound effect, I fell through the wall. I had no idea what was going on. But dump I'd fallen through the back of the storage closet. Huh? Turned out, the back wall was like a revolving door and I made my way to the other side. Just like Kyoko had said. Correct. In the boys' bathroom, there's a storage closet and in the back of the closet, there's a secret room. Okay. So this is the secret room. But what's in here? Okay, there's a lot more than I thought. So guys, thank you for watching. Next time we'll continue because we're going to get into some plot stuff, so... Thank you all for checking this part out. It's like an hour and a half. Jesus. See you next time, guys. Ciao.